Hello, this is Joe Yuhan here to talk to you all about the pelvis. One of the most important parts of any athletic movement and one of the most overlooked in both injury aches and pains and dysfunction. So we're going to outline what the pelvis is supposed to do, how it impacts our running, and all the things that can impact the pelvis that can then cause pain and dysfunction in our legs from below and even into our spine from above. And so again, it's one of these things that's just so overlooked that unless you have pain in the pelvis, it tends to be um, ignored as part of a sports medicine treatment. And um, I'm here today to tell you that it's one of the most important places that um, if you have any issue at all related to athletic performance, aches, pains, um, mobility issues, the pelvis is where we should be looking first. And so let's talk about what the pelvis is first of all. And so the pelvis is this thing here and it's comprised of, it looks like one kind of big bowl with sort of this rim on the side to which the leg or the femur bone connects in here, but it's really two separate bones. And there's a connection in the front right here and then a connection to the sacrum bone back here. And so what I like to do for my clients in the clinic is I kind of like to act this out a little bit more simply using these half foam rolls. And so the pelvis really are these two pieces. And if you put your hands on your hips, so to speak, that's really the top here. And the way that it comes around in the front is here and then in the back it connects to the sacrum and so what's the pelvis supposed to do to do all the athletic things that we want to do in life this pelvis has to move a lot in, in eight different directions up and down forward and back abduction or adduction sort of the in and out and then external rotation and internal rotation and what those motions and when those motions happen isn't necessarily as important as knowing that this thing is supposed to move. And even though um, the leg, the femur bone itself moves a great deal, the pelvis bone should move a little bit too. And when it doesn't move or it gets stuck in a particular position, that's when we have problems. And so we're going to talk about um, some of those issues, but the most important functional movement for runners to consider is the idea that the pelvis when we lift the leg should flex or posterior rotate and then the pelvis should extend or anterior rotate when our leg pushes off behind and if it doesn't do those things that's where we get a lot of problems and so that can be kind of difficult to imagine so sometimes i'll talk about the shoulder blade because the shoulder blade is analogous shoulder blade to arm as pelvis is to the leg. It is the foundation for this long locomotive appendage. And the position of that foundation really dictates the movement of the limb. And so, for example, if my shoulder blade gets stuck in a down position, it's really hard for me to move this arm up as compared to if I put my shoulder blade in an open position, I can achieve that full range. The same thing can happen at the pelvis. So you can imagine that if this is a moving system and one of these bones gets stuck, it's going to have a significant consequence, not only immediately around the hip, but in the entire leg if this foundational piece is stuck in a certain position or just can't move right. And so we'll get into some of those problems and that can come from that, but I want to talk about Okay, how does this pelvis get stuck to begin with? So let's talk about, there's kind of three different tissues that can cause a sticking of this system. And so the first that a lot of runners and hopefully most sports medicine professionals will know about is joints. And so the main joint here is the sacroiliac joint. So named after sacrum bone here in ilium, which is the top of the pelvis here, this joint has to move a little bit. And so that's sort of the center of this small rotation that happens here occurs with sacrum on ilium. And so that's, that can be 
a primary source of movement dysfunction, but not necessarily the only one. And I feel like it gets a little bit too much emphasis um, compared to some of the other things that can really cause this to not move right. But again, joint is one bone and the other bone. If for whatever reason this gets locked up, um, then that can cause this entire half of a pelvis to not move. The same thing can happen up here at the pubic joint. This also has to have a wiggle, and if it gets stuck in one position, um, pain and dysfunction again. Not just here, but what it does to reverberate through the leg below and the spine above. So that's joints. The other tissues then, though, that can cause this rim to not move very well is soft tissue. And so soft tissue is anything that connects around these pelvic bones. And so that can be musculature that comes down onto the pelvis. It can be fascia. It can be ligaments. It can be even our bellies. All of this soft tissue has to um, connect, but also provide adequate mobility for this system. And so that brings us to our next kind of subcomponent to soft tissue, which is the viscera. So the viscera refers to our guts. And so the pelvis really has two roles functionally. Number one, at least for as far as runners are concerned, is the pelvis is the connection, obviously, between the entire leg and the rest of us. So that's our foundation. That is what we land on. That is how we propel. But there's another important function. The pelvis holds our guts. And so, unfortunately, we can't just take our digestive apparatus, set it aside, and go for a run. We have to take this with us. So the challenge of our system is it has to create the functional mobility required to run fast or do anything athletic while also holding this. And so one of the most powerful factors that can limit the functional mobility of this system is a gut. It could be large intestine, which is sort of what I'm showing here, or other aspects, other parts of these organs that then stick to this bone and don't allow that pelvis to move and wiggle in the way that it's supposed to. So we'll, we'll talk to that um, on that subject quite a bit um, further. And so then the other potential tissue that can cause range of motion loss is nerves. And so nerve mobility we've talked about before. The nerves, as you can see, these little yellow things come off and then what they do is they form bigger nerves that then go down into the leg. And these nerves are really important. They're also really sensitive. And if there is any tension, any mechanical tension or a tightness in the flow of this nerve, whether it's going from the lumbar spine through the pelvis into the leg, or sometimes there, there might even be an issue of the nerve's origin all the way up into the neck or the mid-back as it flows down. If there's tension, the body will cause tensions or stiffnesses where it will, again, easier to show with this, if there is a nerve tension in the system, the body very often will grab a pelvis and elevate it. Because if it can sort of elevate the system, it, it prevents excessive tension going into the nerve, maybe in the front or the sciatic nerve into the back. So nerve tension, really important as a factor that could potentially cause a malalignment or a range of motion restriction in the pelvis. So those are the tissue types that cause range of motion loss. What actually causes the motion loss itself? I would say the number one factor that's gonna cause range of motion loss is a fall. Any sort of fall, it doesn't have to be like super severe, but if you fall on this, it's like banging any number of the tissues that we talked about and making them stiff. And that could be banging on this joint and making that sacroiliac joint 
stiff and not wiggle right, or it could be sort of a post-inflammatory effect where you fall hard enough to bruise this and maybe some of the soft tissue around the pelvis gets, um, after it's healed, will get sticky. Or even the gut itself. If we fall and we land really hard on the hip, the large intestine besides that pelvis can then get adhered as that uh, inflammation heals. So all these things, um, any number of trauma can cause a stickiness. Then, the other thing that we have to think about is even things like pregnancy. So okay, we, here's, our, here's our abdomen. So where does this baby go? So this baby starts out obviously really small, but then what it'll do over time is that that six or even eight pound little person starts to then push and crowd this viscera. And very often in a kind of postpartum female runner, they will have especially sticky guts from where that fetus was hanging out for several months. And so pregnancy, just the pregnancy itself can cause um, visceral stickiness. Obviously, the, the birthing of that little person coming out can cause um, range of motion issues or deficits in the pelvis um, as well. And so the last thing that, that can potentially do it too is any surgery in here that can cause scar tissue into the um, abdomen can then cause a stickiness in these bones. And then even an illness, it could be something as simple as a foodborne illness or even um, food sensitivities, or if you're unlucky and get something like Giardia or a parasitic infection, that internal inflammation then causes, can cause a stickiness and really adhere to these bones. So those are all the things that can cause range of motion loss in the pelvis. In the subsequent videos, we're gonna talk about then what does that do? How does that create injuries or prevent in, perpetuate injuries? And then what can we do to keep this system moving and thus um, prevent injury, overcome aches and pains in the legs and keep running efficient?